Welcome back to my channel, I'm James. Today I've got another video on my very popular new and upcoming 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray releases reviews video. Now this is one of those videos where I go into tons of these new and upcoming 4Ks and Blu-rays of movies and TV series and give you reviews on all of these. Now these are all things that are sent to me way early for review from different studios all over the world. And I dive into each of these, give you reviews on tons of these, so that way you know what of these you either want to buy or pre-order, and what of these you should skip. Now, when you get done watching this video, there are numerous ones in this video series available right now for you to check out. You wanna go check out some of those videos as well. It's the same type of thing that I do in this, where it's popular where I go through all of these different reviews of tons of titles that are sent to me from all over the world. And there's tons of hidden titles a lot of people aren't aware of are released on 4K, Blu-ray, TV series, movies, and I cover them all in those video series. So those are something that you're gonna wanna dive into and watch after you get done watching this video. Now, if any of these titles that I cover in this video series you're wanting to buy or pre-order, make sure to go down to those links I've posted in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. I've done all the work already for you and gathered them all together and I post them all down below in the description section and as a pinned comment. Those take you straight out to Amazon, they never cost you even a penny extra, and they're on sale for the same prices everywhere. So if you decide to buy any of these after hearing all of my reviews for any of these, make sure to go down to those links I posted down below. Now to start off with, we're gonna be comparing Air Force One, the 1997 Air Force One, the brand new limited edition steelbook release from Sony, to the older 2018 4K Ultra HD release from Sony. Now, this is something I've gotten a lot of requests for, so I dived into this and did a bunch of my exclusive testing on this to share all of those results with all of you. Now, I can tell you there's quite a bit of things that make a big difference between the two of them that really kind of surprised me. I didn't expect there to be as much of a difference as there actually was. Now, for this release in 2023, Sony went back and did a bunch of things to make the actual image look better that drastically affected how good this actually looks. Now, I originally thought the original 4K looked pretty darn good as well, but the things that Sony did on this did help it. Now, they both are native 4K 2160Ps to start with, but for this new 2023 limited edition Steelbook 4K, it does have Dolby Vision and HDR10, whereas the old release only had HDR10. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, if I only have HDR10 available on either my player or TV, will I still notice a difference? Well, we'll get to that here in just a second. I'm gonna answer that for you as well. But if you do have Dolby Vision, right off the bat, the Dolby Vision does look roughly 10% better than the HDR10 did on this disc. So right off the bat, you do notice a difference between the two of them in that sense. But it goes even deeper than that. For the new 4K disc on this, they put it on a BD100. On the old 4K from 2018, that's on a BD66. There's a reason why they put this on a BD100 for this. It's because when I went into the rough average bitrate on this, there is some big differences, which is what affects why the image looks so much more stable, the film grain is so much more stable on this, and I'll explain why. On the 2018 release, it has a BD66, and the rough average bitrate on this was roughly 55 megabits per second, which was pretty decent, and like I said, it looked really good, I thought, when I originally got it. But there was some things like grain instabilities, where the film grain had some fluctuations, there was some slight digital noise, because it was on a smaller, more compressed disc where they compressed the image down just slightly more to fit it onto this. On the new 4K Ultra HD release, this has a rough average bitrate of 81 megabits per second. That's a rough average increase of roughly 26 megabits per second over the 2018 4K release. That's huge. That rough average bitrate increase going from that 55 all the way up to 81 lends to why they, one, put it on a BD100 versus a BD66 for that, but it drastically helped the image be way more stable. I didn't have any of those film grain fluctuations or instabilities. The image on this and the depth in this was increased more so than the 2018 because of that. This does also have HDR peak brightness and brightness levels that are higher and more increased than it was on the 2018. 
Now, for those of you that know a little bit about data and how HDR peak brightness works is that means between the difference between the lights to darks that drastically give you that kind of almost 3D effect to your eye where it's going from bright whites to dark inky blacks. Now there's no black crush present on either release, the 2018 or this, but this one does have a better looking color because of the Dolby Vision on it. And they touched up even the HDR 10 slightly. There were some scenes when I was watching on HDR 10 that did look better on this than it did on the previous 2018 as well because even on the HDR10 you didn't have those film grain fluctuations at all on this at all and it just lended to this looking so much more stable and a better image overall. And this had an HDR peak brightness of 1500 nits. On the 2018 it had a peak brightness of 1400. So that's a whole hundred higher on that. So that all adds up to why this looks so much better overall. You have higher bit rate, you have obviously better peak brightness, and there's numerous things like the film graining things that really did help this be the ultimate edition of Air Force One. So for Air Force One in this limited edition steelbook set on 4K Ultra HD, this gets a review score of an amazing 9.7. It was a nice enough upgrade that I could notice the things, even going through, going through the images side by side and doing my testing on it. It was a nice enough upgrade to give you a rough idea. You're looking at about a 12% image upgrade overall through the entire film over the 2018 4K release. And to me, even that 12% upgrade is well worth it. I mean, the bitrate alone drastically helped this, but all of the other little things they did, especially with the Dolby Vision, if you do have Dolby Vision, you'll notice even a bigger healthy increase than even the HDR10, but the HDR10 still had an increase and looked better on this than it did on the 2018. So for that review score over 9.7, this is highly recommended as a must buy, especially if you love the film. I absolutely love it. I think Harrison Ford's great in it. Wolfgang Peterson directed this, and it's one of those action classics that if you've never experienced this film, basically it's about Air Force One. Harrison Ford plays the president and Air Force One gets taken over by a bunch of terrorists and he has to fight to basically, as the president, fighting off the terrorists in the plane and helping to get his wife and child and things like that. And it's just, it's really well done. Keeps things moving, it's very fast paced, it's not too over the top. I can't really say there's much in it that I can really say I think is wrong with it. I think it's a phenomenal action classic this steelbook is great. I really like this limited edition. And I think Sony's doing a great job updating their catalog titles to make them the premier image and sound quality. Now sound quality, you're looking at the same audio quality as on the 2018. That didn't change. I didn't notice any difference. The only things that did was the image. And I'm thankful that at least that image was a nice and healthy upgrade that made this worth buying. Now I know everybody's gonna ask me about the Mask of Zorro and I got that to test it against the previous 4K release as well. A lot of the things that I just shared on Air Force One were similar. Now the bit rate was obviously a different number but the average increase, you got a much healthier bit rate increase on the Mask of Zorro on this new limited edition than you did on the previous 4K. And I noticed the Dolby Vision, it was at least about an 8% better looking than the HDR10 on this was. So overall, it was a similar experience that I noticed going through the testing on this release as well. Mask of Zorro, I am definitely glad I got this in the new limited edition because I think it's a great action family movie that you really can't miss out on. And this film, I really want the sequel to. I don't know why if they're doing this one and releasing it again in a limited edition steelbook, Come on, put it on 4K Ultra HD, the sequel. I loved The Legend of Zorro and it needs to be on 4K to go along with this. Hopefully Sony's working on that and they're gonna release the sequel as well on 4K. But this one was a nice upgrade as well. Now, will I say it is drastic as Air Force One's upgrade that I was previously talking about? No, total image upgrade you're looking at this between the previous 4K is only about 8%. So if you do have Dolby Vision or HDR10, yes, the film grain was more stable on this. It has a much better bit rate. And those things that I kind of shared in that Air Force One, but you're only looking at about 8% image upgrade on this versus what you had on Air Force One, where it was a drastic 12%, the different things that really enhanced that. So that gives you an idea where this stands, but this is one I definitely recommend if you have not gotten this yet, you need to get it in this limited edition steelbook because this is the best way to view this film. I really enjoyed this. I'll show you kind of what these steelbooks come with because I really like them. It has this J card on here. Really nice shiny metallic artwork. It says the Mask of Zorro on the side. It has a really cool picture of Antonio Banderas on the back here. And then when you get inside here, again, Antonio Banderas. 
And then it's got obviously your two discs in here, your 4K Ultra HD and your Blu-ray disc. And overall, I think they're doing an outstanding job not overcharging for these limited edition steelbooks either. I've really enjoyed collecting these from Sony. And even though I already own the previous 4Ks, I'm thankful that Sony's not just throwing the same disc in these and basically regurgitating it. They're actually doing work on the actual transfer to give us something nicer of an image. And I'll take even a little nicer of an image because as a collector and as a cinephile, I love when my favorite films get even better transfers. This really is the ultimate way to watch Mask of Zorro and Air Force One. I highly recommend both of these that you buy these and add these to your collection. Now, if you want to buy any of these now that you've heard my review scores, as I said, I always post all of the links for all of these directly from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Just like with this video, I do tons of these exclusive in-depth analysis and reviews that you're only ever gonna find to watch here on my YouTube channel. And you never wanna miss out on any of this. Just like what I'm getting into today, there's tons of these that are sent to me from studios many weeks early for review for me to dive into these and test these out for all of you here on my YouTube channel. So you never wanna miss out on any of this exclusive content. So make sure to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Next up, we've got Rawhide. And this is one of those classic 1959 Western TV series. And big shout out and thank you to Via Vision for sending this to me early for review. I got this in about two to three weeks early for review to dive into and tell you all what my thoughts are on this and how this actually looks. This is one of my favorite Western TV series and it has Clint Eastwood in it. He plays the character of Rowdy in it. And I can tell you Rawhide is one of those classic Westerns from 1959 that's about cattle drovers and their experiences along their drives and the things that happened, the adventures, and it's really well done. I think Clint Eastwood's character of Rowdy is very enjoyable in it. I think Clint Eastwood obviously got his start in this, but he does a great job in it and he really sinks his teeth into this Western role. And I've always owned them on DVD previously before, and they've always been available in this massive complete series DVD set. Though I will say this DVD set, which is extremely heavy, but it is a very poor image presentation. The sound on it's horrible. The image presentation on these DVDs is just absolutely poor. I mean, the show, it's always kind of looked poor because it didn't get a remaster and it didn't get any sort of restoration or remaster work done on it previously. And it's always just been available in this very poor sounding and looking set. So I was excited to see what Via Vision and CBS Home Entertainment did with the remaster on this Blu-ray set. Now, this is season one. So they are releasing this in individual seasons on Blu-ray. And when I was going into this, I was surprised at how much better the image looked than the previous DVDs did. The new remaster that they did on this, basically going back to the original film elements that's available, there is some issues with some tears and some issues with some of the grain fluctuating throughout it, but that's due to the film from 1959 just being that poor condition. On the previous DVD release, the image on it was very hard to see a lot of it. It was overly dark. You really couldn't see any of the episodes that were at night very well at all because it's a black and white Western TV series. It just was very difficult to see on these DVD releases. I kind of put up with it because that's all that was ever available of this and I loved the series. But I can tell you that this, now that is all gone. The nighttime scenes, all those images, there's no black crush like there was on these DVDs where you really couldn't see anything. The image you can see so much better on this. You can see details on their faces and everything else that you could never see on the previous DVD release. The remaster they did on this is very impressive what they were able to do, even though, like I said, some of that damage that it's still present is simply due to what was present on the original film. But overall, the image that they provided on this is a drastic increase and is a very surprising release over the previous DVDs from before. Now talking about the sound though on this, we still get a 2.0 mono Dolby Digital. And that 2.0 mono is good sounding on the Blu-ray compared to the DVD. But like I said on these DVDs, it was so poor, you really couldn't even hear some of the episodes. Heck, there was numerous episodes my wife and I would watch of these on DVD. And we just kind of skipped them because you really couldn't hear what was going on. You couldn't understand the dialogue. They were that poor. On this, it is better, 
But keep in mind that 2.0 mono, there's only so much that can be done with it and there's limitations. It does sound better on this, but there are still some of those scenes and some of those episodes in season one where it's still harder to hear. Though again, those harder to hear, you couldn't hear really at all on the DVDs, that's how poor they were. So you can hear them on this, you just have to turn it up a little bit more. But that's the limitations of the original film elements and what's on those. Talking about subtitles, there's no subtitles on season one. Now, on the original DVD release, there was no subtitles on the first couple of seasons anyway. So it's not like you're missing out on something as far as that goes either. It's similar in that. But for season one, your total runtime is 1,190 minutes you get a ton of content for season one on Blu-ray. And I'll show you what you get in this. As most of you know, I like to cut the plastic so that way it kind of leaves an opening to kind of protect these season cases. So it looks like it's sealed, but it's not. There's actually a cut right in here. So I can slip actually the Blu-ray out. And that's just a little something I do to kind of basically have this so I don't have to buy like an outside protector. It's just a little quirk of mine. But anyhow, on the side here, it does say Rawhide, CBS, Home Entertainment, the first season, number one, obviously for season one. On the back here, it talks about it was completely remastered. Every season one black and white episode, special features. You do get a bonus episode, Incident of the Roman Candles, and you get original commercial break bumper. So those are included as your special features, but that's all the special features that are contained on season one. Now, it also is in the original aspect ratio of four by three. They did not change that at all. And it does say it is region B locked. As always, I do all my exclusive testing on all of these. I am happy to tell you that every single Blu-ray disc in the set is 100% region free. You won't have any issues playing this anywhere worldwide. Now I'm gonna put that direct link as always directly in the description section below and as a pinned comment. So if you wanna buy this anywhere worldwide, that Amazon link down there ships anywhere worldwide. Now showing you what you get in this same cover on this, it just has PG for mild violence and mild themes. And like I did say originally, for this show coming out in 1959, it was considered extremely violent and ahead of its time. And it has a lot of subject matter and stories in it that I think will surprise you for the time period. It fits very in line with Clint Eastwood's more modern Westerns as well, because there's a lot of storylines in this that for the time period were considered extremely violent. I love the series. I do think it fits in with Gunsmoke. And if you haven't checked out my Virginian review, I did an exclusive review here on my YouTube channel. You'll never find that anywhere else. It's an image comparison review between the DVDs and the Blu-rays. It's a brand new remastered Blu-ray set of the Virginian. If you wanna check out that review, that's another great classic Western TV series that I absolutely love. That's available right now here on my YouTube channel to watch and check out. But all the links for those sets as well are exclusively under that video. It's very hard to find. And it's one of those that I did the review here a while back. That's another great classic Western series that I love. And I'm so glad we're getting these remastered on Blu-ray. When you get inside here, it does list off all of the episodes on each of the discs. You get about four to five episodes on each of these discs. You do have plenty of room for the content on it. It wasn't over compressed. I didn't have issues with banding or blocking or anything like that. Though, like I said, because of the time period, you will notice issues where there's slight tears and splotches and things like that that are present because of the damage on the original film elements. On it, it does say disc one, complete season one, and each disc has the same artwork, just saying the disc one, two, three, and four. Behind it, it does list off all the episodes on the inside of the cover artwork. Now, do I wish this was released in a complete series box set like the DVDs? Sure, but I understand what the studios are doing. Like I talked about with that Virginian review, they're paying to do these remasters and release these on Blu-ray completely remastered by releasing them one season at a time, and then that funds the next season. So I understand how these studios are doing it. I appreciate they're releasing these on Blu-ray at all because I'm shocked we're getting this good of a job on Blu-ray for an older Western TV series, just like with The Virginian, when a lot of these I never thought we'd see past DVD. I'm thrilled these are coming out. Clint Eastwood was great in this. And it's one of those shows you sit back and you watch like four or five episodes in a row and you realize how enjoyable Western TV series were, especially because Western TV series didn't shy away from the violence. There's violence in this that added to why it had that great like realistic charm for Western TV series. And I absolutely love it. 
I'm a huge Western fan. Now, in comparison to all of the hundreds of other Blu-rays of TV series I've tested and reviewed here on this YouTube channel, for Rawhide, this gets a very good 8.9. This is a must buy you're gonna to wanna to have in your collection. Don't wait hoping that it's gonna be released on a complete series, Blu-ray TV series set later on, because I do wanna see them release all the rest of these. I don't want it to be one of these that we get one of these and then there wasn't enough support. This is a great release. This is one of those that if you love classic TV series, you need to have this in your collection. Support Via Vision's release because they're doing a great job. I was really surprised at how good this looked compared to those old DVDs, how poor these were. Now again, keep in mind it is an 8.9 though. So anything in the 8s, 9s and on, those are all things you want to buy and have in your collection. It's a good release, but the image is not going to be up in the 9s. So the image and sound, because it's from 1959, that tells you where this sits. So go into this with that expectation. It's an 8.9 image and sound. It's enjoyable, you'll enjoy it. You'll have to turn the sound up a little bit louder in some episodes because it is a little bit harder to hear in some of the episodes. But overall, you'll enjoy this series if you like Gunsmoke, if you like Bonanza, if you like the Virginian that I reviewed. Any of those classic Western TV series, you're gonna like Rawhide and you're gonna be so happy you have this in your collection. I'm looking forward to Via Vision releasing all of the rest of the seasons of this because as long as they keep this quality up, which I'll keep getting these in for review and testing them out for all of you, but if they keep the quality of this up, we'll have an amazing collection of Rawhide on Blu-ray to enjoy for many years to come. And this looks great in HD. This is an 8.9 and it's highly recommended you buy this and add this to your collection, especially if you love classic TV series. Now I posted the direct link to pre-order and buy this down in the description section below. So keep them coming, CBS Home Entertainment and Via Vision. This was a great release. Next up we have Running the Bases. This is the first release by Mill Creek on 4K Ultra HD. Now they did send this to me early for review and I do appreciate that. Now, when I dived into this, it is one of those that I'd never heard of the film before. I hadn't seen it. And so I kind of went into it just blindly, not knowing much about it. And it's a sports, baseball, and faith film that's based on the story of a coach. And basically he goes to a new high school to teach baseball. And it's some of the things he encounters and the trials and tribulations he goes through while keeping his faith and making decisions that will affect him and his family and basically are one of those things is he going to do what's right and stick up for what's right and what he believes in or is he going to succumb to pressure and deciding to do things that are wrong i do think it's well done i think it's a very heartwarming heart touching film and i did enjoy it i will say there is some slightly cheesy scenes of dialogue in it but they're not heavy it's very brief and I think the acting in it was well done and it really did kind of surprise me how much I enjoyed it and was engaged by it. It's one of those films that will touch you. It has a beautiful story behind it. And I do think it's a sincerely made and worthwhile wholesome film. And that's something rare. How often do we get wholesome films nowadays? And it's one of those that I did enjoy the representation of Christianity and faith. You know, as being a Christian, I loved sticking up for what's right and doing what's right. And this is one of those films that does look really good on 4K. I do think that the HDR10 they implemented on this really helped with the lights to darks. It's not a reference quality release and it's not going to be one of those that's going to knock your socks off as the best 4K you've ever seen. But for a sports faith based film, I'm really happy it got a 4K release because I love collecting 4Ks. They're actually one of my favorite things to collect of all time. So I was excited that this got a 4K release, but it's not, as I said, a reference quality release. It's good looking, it's an enjoyable film, but it's not gonna be an Academy Award winner. There's some scenes that are just kind of more cheesy dialogue like a reference, but they don't ruin the film and you sit back and you enjoy it and you learn something from the film. I'll show you what you get in this though. It does have a slip cover on it. It says running the bases 4K. On the back here, it does have some special features like deleted scenes, trailers. Now here's something unique about the special features. All the special features are presented in 4K. 
That's about the first time I've ever seen that, where all of the special features, not a single one of them, were in HD. They're all in 4K on this. So I like that little touch that was on this as well. Now, when you get inside here, this is your 4K Ultra HD disc in here. And I do like that it wasn't over compressed. I didn't have any issues with it being compressed down or any issues with playback. There wasn't any banding, any blocking or playback issues at all. There was no black crush either. And if you're looking for a film that touches your heart that's about love, forgiveness, and redemption, this is a very wholesome film that you'll sit back and enjoy. And it is one of those that the whole family can enjoy and they'll all learn something from. This does come recommended. It's a good 4K release. It is a budget release. It doesn't cost very much. If you're looking for something like that, like I explained, a wholesome family film, you'll want to check this one out. Next up, we have Star Trek Strange New World Season 1. Now this was sent to me about two weeks early for review from CBS Home Entertainment and Paramount Studios. I do appreciate it, but as most of you know, never affects any of my review scores anyways. But diving into this, I hadn't seen the series till this arrived for review, and I am hoping and planning to do a 4K versus Blu-ray image comparison versus this Blu-ray release versus the 4K release they're coming out with of Star Trek Strange New World Season 1. Now, the funny thing is that 4K release I actually announced way back last year in my previous Halo review when I was doing that in-depth analysis and review. If you haven't checked out that review, it's available here on this YouTube channel. I did my exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons on Halo, and that was sent for review from CBS Home Entertainment and Paramount as well. And I kind of thought it was odd though that this got released separately from the 4K release of Strange New Worlds that they're releasing later on. Whereas Halo, they were released together. But either way, I am planning and hoping to do an image comparison between the two. But for now, I'm going to talk to you about this Blu-ray release. As I said, I had not seen Star Trek Strange New Worlds before this arrived for review. I was excited to dive into it. I have not been a huge fan of Discovery. It's not one of those shows that I really enjoy much at all, to be honest with you. But I do enjoy Star Trek Picard. I actually think Star Trek Picard has gotten better the later seasons of it than the earlier seasons. And it's kind of grown on me. This was one of those I was interested to dive into because I really liked Captain Christopher Pike's character, who's played by Anson Mount. He had a brief, basically, couple of episodes he was in Discovery. And I really enjoyed him and Spock. And so I was excited to see what they did, kind of going into more of an episodic content for Star Trek on this release all on its own. And so it was one of those things I was hoping it wasn't going to be like Discovery, because like I said, I just wasn't a big fan of Discovery. There's numerous things I just don't really enjoy about it. And if you love that show, great for you. But for me, it's almost a little bit too emotional for Star Trek, if that makes sense. And this is just my opinion about the show. But... Discovery has so many episodes where everyone's crying all the time. If you pay attention, like Michael Burnham, she cries in almost every episode and not trying to pick on her character specifically, but almost each of the characters in the episodes, there's lots of crying in it. And it's fine if you like that. I'm not dissing it because of the crying. It's just something I personally didn't enjoy. I think it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't fit what I'm looking for in a TV series. I'm looking for adventures and I just feel like it's overly emotional and they almost push that overly emotional in every single episode and they're trying to make it seem like oh they're all a big family constantly and oh we're gonna cry in every episode but anyhow I'm digressing there not mean to digress but I was excited to see how this was I can tell you this is nothing like Star Trek Discovery I was thrilled with how this show turned out it goes to more of an episodic kind of earlier the original series, Next Generation, even Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Voyager feel in this. They go to more where each episode is more contained in and of itself, where it does have plot threads that are to a bigger story overall, but it does the similar thing that like Next Generation and Voyager did where they were each individual episodes and they had like strings that tied it to all the other episodes. I really missed that and I've forgotten how much I missed it until I watched this series. It's very lighthearted. It is not too serious. It doesn't take itself too over the top and serious like Discovery and Picard do. Those are very serious, more darker Star Trek. This is a very lighthearted theme and a lighthearted tone, which I feel like Star Trek has been lacking and missing. And this really brings it back to what I enjoyed about Star Trek 
when I first started watching it, the original series and Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. And even talking about Enterprise, this even harkens back to Enterprise. Now, for season one, it runs 525 minutes roughly, and it has 10 episodes on it. I do feel like this was them testing the waters to see how much people enjoyed watching this. Thankfully, this was extremely successful and was a huge hit, and we are getting more seasons of this going forward, which I'm so thankful for because I absolutely adored this show and was really surprised at how enjoyable this really was as a Trekkie. Now for this Blu-ray release, we do get an audio English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1, it's a very good audio mix, but I would have loved to have seen a Dolby Atmos mix on this. Now, we might be getting it on the 4K release, which is why I'm curious how that's gonna turn out, and I am hoping to do that 4K versus Blu-ray image comparison and sound comparison, just overall comparison between this Blu-ray. But it does sound good on this. I did enjoy the audio mix. As far as the image presentation on this goes, it was good looking. Though it is limited, I can tell, by obviously 1080p HD, the depth and the detail in the image, it's limited because it is a 1080p HD, it's not a 4K. Whereas I can imagine the colors on this, it is such a colorful show, and I will say this goes back to Star Trek being very extremely colorful. It really looked good colorful wise on this, but I can imagine if it's got Dolby Atmos for the sound, Dolby Vision, HDR 10, 10 plus, man, the colors on this can look really good. And I'm excited to see how they're gonna look on that 4K. But this is a good Blu-ray. I mean, it's not overly high priced anyways. And for the first season, I was glad to dive into this and get to experience this because like I said, I kind of had been disappointed in some of the Star Trek that this brought me back to new heights of enjoying an energetic, fun, colorful, and lighthearted Star Trek series that I've really missed. Thankfully, this does it, and it is one of those series that I do highly recommend checking out. Now, getting to my review score for this on Blu-ray, this gets a highly recommended 9.2. This is one that if you haven't checked out this series, you're gonna wanna check it out. If you wanna watch it on Blu-ray, this Blu-ray gets a recommended 9.2 to buy and add to your collection. Can't tell you how the 4K looks because I haven't gotten it in to start doing my analysis or testing on it yet. If you're a Star Trek fan, you owe it to yourself to check this series out. I won't give too much away, but if you do like Captain Kirk, you gotta check this out. But anyhow, this is one of those series that I do think you'll enjoy. And we'll have to see how the 4K turns out, but if you wanna watch this in the meantime, get it on this Blu-ray set. If you don't have 4K, buy it on this Blu-ray set anyways. That way you can experience this series. It is a very enjoyable Star Trek series. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Any of these titles you're wanting to buy, I've posted all the direct links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below this video. Next up, we have Kino Lorber's release of Little Miss Marker from 1934. This is a Shirley Temple classic. I grew up watching all of Shirley Temple's movies and I love her as an actress. This is one of her best roles ever. If you have not experienced this film, it is a great heart touching film. Basically, she gets left as an IOU to basically some gangsters, gamblers, because her dad couldn't pay off the debt he owed. And so she's left as the IOU, like here's my child, to basically pay off this debt for now until I can get the money. And she charms the hearts of basically the gangsters and those that work at the gambling joint. And she's adorable. And there's no way to explain to you how good of an actress she was as a child. And I love this film to this day. And I am so thankful Kino Lorber did a remaster on this and released this on Blu-ray. It looks really good. For a film from 1934, I'm amazed at how good of a job they did on this. Now, it does still have some film damage and things like that present, but the film's from 1934 and it's never looked this good. The DVDs were always extremely poor looking and you could really not hear much in it. There was numerous crackles, clicks, things like that. The DVDs were just really poor. 
This looks and sounds really good. I was amazed at how good of a job they did with this. Now the crazy thing is a lot of people didn't know that this was remade in Sorrowful Jones with Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. Now this came out in 1949 and Kino Lorber released this as well remastered. These are both upcoming titles here. So these were sent early for review, but both of these are recommended films. Now, do I think Sorrowful Jones is as good as Little Miss Marker? No, I like Little Miss Marker a little better because I do think Shirley Temple was phenomenal in it. But the funny thing is, is Bob Hope and Lucille Ball are really good in this and this has different comedic beats for a remake. And it's kind of one of those things a lot of people didn't know that it was remade and it's actually almost the same story that Little Miss Marker was. Different child actress at the time, but it is one of those that if you enjoy Little Miss Marker, You'll want to check out Sorrowful Jones to see the comparisons between them, but Lucille Ball's great in this and Bob Hope is actually really funny in this. So I always thought of Sorrowful Jones as more comedic than Little Miss Marker was. Little Miss Marker was more, in my opinion, slightly serious tone versus Sorrowful Jones's more comedic tone of the same story. But these are both highly recommended releases if you have not checked them out. Start with the Shirley Temple one, watch the original first. And then if you enjoy this one, then check out Sorrowful Jones. Now touching on two Westerns that I like, these are two films with Yvonne DiCarlo in them. And she's one of those actresses that I just really enjoyed her. She's very, very pretty and she was a great actress. I like her accent when she's talking. It just really lended to why I think she blended into these Westerns so well. Both of these films are really enjoyable. Now Tomahawk, it's more or less one of those where it's about the Indian, about taking over their land to build a wagon route through it because of basically the gold miners and things like that. And it's kind of one of those films that it's more or less about the effects of what happens and how the Indians attack and how they don't like that their land's being taken. And it's an enjoyable Western film. Uh, now I will tell you these are both directed by the same director as well. So not only did he have the same actress in them, but they're both directed by the same director. And he did one of my favorite Westerns, Big Jake with John Wayne in it. That's the same director that directed both of these. Now Border River is about a Confederate soldier that steals $2 million hoping to kind of turn the tide of the war. And he heads to basically a Mexican border town and it's how he's basically getting double crossed and he's trying to get the money so that way he can actually turn the tide of the war. And it's all the things that happen to him along the way and once he gets to the town. And it's one of those films that has a bunch of twists and turns in it. It's an enjoyable Western and I like that sense of it that it was tying basically back to the Civil War and those types of things. So it's a unique Western for that sense as well. So if you enjoy Western films, these are two upcoming titles from Kino Lorber you're gonna to wanna to add to your collection because Border River, I really enjoyed this one. Tomahawk, I enjoyed a little bit less as much as Border River. I thought Border River was better, but I love collecting Westerns on Blu-ray and these are ones that I really enjoyed both of them and I do think these are recommended titles you're gonna to wanna to have in your collection if you love classic Westerns. Next up, we have The Werewolf of Washington from 1973. And this is one of those really quirky horror, sci-fi, political drama films that is really hard to put into a category. It's basically a satire about politics and basically the main character being a werewolf and how it's kind of like making fun of politics and the White House and political things. And it's kind of done during that kind of like Watergate era type thing, kind of tying the whole story together, but done in more of a, like I said, satire. I enjoy the film. Don't go into it thinking it's absolutely amazing. It's not one of those films that you're gonna sit there and say, man, it was absolutely the most stellar film I've ever seen. But I enjoy it enough that I'm glad it was released on Blu-ray because it is one of those that you'll never see a film like this ever again. I can't actually even say that I've ever seen something mixing all different genres together, thrown together in a film like this with political genres thrown into this. I mean, it really is a unique film in that sense of its own. Now it does come with, and I'll touch on that, it does come with the director's cut, which is a 2021 director's cut. That's 74 minutes. Plus they did a 2K restoration of the original theatrical release, which is 89 minutes. In my opinion, I like the longer theatrical version of the director's cut. Yes, it's shorter and it's way more fast paced, but I like the extra things that were in the theatrical cut, but you do get both of those in this. So I do applaud Kino Lorber for releasing both cuts of the film that you do get it on Blu-ray. And it looks pretty good. I mean, this is the best I've ever seen it, but it is more one of those offbeat films 
about a werewolf kind of horror satire with some like dark comedy in it that if you haven't checked out this film this is one i recommend for those of you that like those quirky kind of more horror satires next up we've got dragonheart from shout factory now this film was originally released in 1996. i would see this film in theaters twice that's how much i enjoyed it Dennis Quaid's in it. Sean Connery plays the Draco dragon. He's actually the voice of the dragon in it. And I was curious how this was going to hold up once it was released on 4K because the special effects at the time were ahead of its time. It was one of those really amazing things at the time in 1996. I remember everyone was shocked. They were talking about how amazing the special effects for the dragon were in this. And I was curious when they went back and did this, how it was actually going to look. And I can tell you this is a native 4K 2160p. They went back to the original film elements and did a brand new 4K scan and 4K restoration of the original camera negative. Now this does have Dolby Vision and HDR10 on it. Between the two of them, the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, I didn't really notice that much of a variation. We're talking maybe three to 4% between them. Both were very nice presentations. So depending on which you have available on your TV or your home professionally calibrated display, both of them you'll enjoy. As far as the special effects go and how they hold up on this, it does look decent, but it does not look like a modern special effects film. There's charm behind this because of that though. I do think you notice some more of the issues, I guess, with the special effects than you did on the original DVD releases or Blu-ray releases before it because they just weren't amazing transfers. This, the depth and detail on the characters, their costumes, the backgrounds, everything looks really good on this when it's not the special effects shots. You can really see some great details on Dennis Quaid's face and his armor and his costumes he's wearing that really are impressive on this. Now audio wise, we do get English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. I do really wish we would have gotten a Dolby Atmos, but the DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 is much better than any of the previous Blu-ray releases and the previous DVD releases. It had some decent LFE on it, and I really enjoyed the audio mix, though I wish we would have gotten the German Dolby Atmos mix on this. But it is what it is. I'll take the image upgrade on this over the Blu-ray release before it that was released in Germany even. The image on this is much, much nicer, and it has much more depth and detail. The Dolby Vision HDR10 really looked good with brilliant whites and inky blacks. Now, if you love dragon movies, you're gonna wanna check out my Dragon Slayer review. That just came out here recently. That was a big release and is another big dragon movie that actually was done by Disney. And most people didn't know that that's a Disney film from the 80s. But that's one of those you're going to want to go check out after you get done watching this review as well. Dragon Slayer is one of those very exciting 4K releases. Now show you what you get in this on the front here. It is 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray. I can tell you the Blu-ray in this does have the new restoration and transfer on it as well. So image wise, you're getting the best image version available on the Blu-ray disc in this as well. On the side here, it does say Dragonheart. Then on the back, it talks about that it's a new 4K restoration. Now, showing you what you get in this, you do get the Blu-ray. It is sadly region A locked. It is not region free, but your 4K disc is 100% region free. So any of you that wanna buy this and have this shipped worldwide through that link I've posted down below from Amazon, keep in mind your Blu-ray is region A locked, but your 4K is 100% region free. So to give you an idea of how the image and sound compares to all the hundreds of other 4Ks I've exclusively tested and reviewed, this gets a great 9.0. It is recommended to buy and add to your collection, just keep in mind it is a 9.0. That tells you where it falls. If you've been watching my channel for a while over the last several years, you get an idea then how this is image and sound quality by the total sum up review score. It's not gonna be the best image you've ever seen. You will notice things like the special effects stand out a little bit more because of how good of a job they did with this 4K scan and restoration. It does shine through. You can see those special effects and the issues with some of them a little bit more, but it does not ruin it in any shape or form. I was actually surprised at how well the special effects held up for this from a film from 1996, and I still really enjoyed it. I had my son watch it with me and he loved the film. It's a wonderful dragon film. The score for this and the musical score is really good sounding and it sounds great on the audio mix on this. Now, when you get done watching this video, make sure to go down and let me know how excited you are for any of these releases. 
Start that conversation in the comment section below and let me know are you excited about Dragonheart or any of these dozens upon dozens of other reviews I've done here in this video. Let me know what of these you're excited to buy or add to your collection now that I've done my reviews on them. So make sure to start that conversation down there in the comment section below. Next up we have Jacob's Ladder. Now this is the brand new imprint release of Jacob's Ladder on Blu-ray. This has been released in numerous territories around the world on Blu-ray before. And it is one of those films, I've always kind of thought of it as a more trippy kind of Vietnam War veteran film. And I've never been able to put it in a category. Some people call it a horror, some people call it a sci-fi, some people call it a war film, some people call it like a psychological thriller. It is really one of those films that it's really hard to put in any specific category. But when it originally came out in 1990, it was severely misunderstood. And I think it has definitely grown in cult status over the years. Well, Imprint released it in this brand new slipcover limited edition set. And it does say on the side here, number 207, Jacob's Ladder. And it does have a 1080p HD presentation by Studio Canal. So it's a similar presentation that Studio Canal released previously. But it's available in this region free Blu-ray set now. So for those of us around the world that want to buy this in this limited edition slipcover set, it is available now. And I will tell you, Imprint does an outstanding job. They did a good job with this release by including tons of audio commentaries, behind the scenes, additional scenes, archival interviews. They really do a great job in these imprint releases. Now showing you what you get in this, it does come with these limited edition slip covers, which I really do like. I think imprint does a good job with these, making these a really nice collectible. And here you do get a different cover artwork than what's on the outside. Obviously Tim Robbins is the actor in it. It says you can't run from your own mind. And then when you get inside here, I do like how they put artwork on the inside, how it shows Tim Robbins character. And then this is your disc on here. As I said, this is region free. It is one of those films I personally think is kind of an acquired taste. It's about kind of violent hallucinations he has after coming back from the Vietnam War. And it is violent. I will tell you it is over the top violent. But it is one of those films that has just one of those really bizarre feelings behind it. But it is one of those that I said is more of an acquired taste. But this release is a great release from Imprint. Next up we have Return to Paradise. This is one of those kind of films that it is a heartbreaking film. It has Vince Vaughn, Anne Heche, and Joaquin Phoenix in it. And it is one of those films that it's a prison kind of are you gonna do what's right or are you gonna do what's wrong films that explores, you know, would you give up time of your life to save your friend's life to admit that you did a crime? So that way basically they wouldn't pay the ultimate price. It's definitely one of those dramas that it will engage you, though I said it will really tug at your heartstrings. The performances in it are great. This is released from a brand new 4K scan of the original negative. So they did a very nice transfer on this. So as far as what I've seen of this film, this is the best way to experience this on Blu-ray. And Imprint did a good job with this release. If you're looking for a deep and engaging drama, this does have strong language, violence, and things like that in it, so keep that in mind. But it is one of those films I have to be in the mood to watch, and that's just kind of the way it is. I enjoy the film, I think the acting in it was great. But like I said, for this deep and dark of a drama for me, I gotta be in a certain mood to watch it. But Imprints is the best way to watch this on Blu-ray. Next up, we have the film that inspired the Indiana Jones series. Steven Spielberg's talked about this film a lot over his career. He actually references this film and it is a very, very noticeable how he took elements of this and used it in Indiana Jones. But this came out with Charlton Heston in 1954. And it's very similar in the sense of it's about an explorer basically looking for treasure and the adventures he goes on. Always really enjoyed this film, though it's had a rough history on physical media. Thankfully, this was remastered in HD by Paramount Pictures. This is the best this film has ever looked. I would have loved a 4K Ultra HD release of this, but my understanding is, is because of the original elements and the issues with those, I'm not so sure how it would have looked on 4K, exasperating some of those issues. It's got film grain fluctuations, it's got issues with some little tears and blots and splotches, but this is the best this film has ever looked. And Kino Lorber worked with Paramount on this to release this on Blu-ray. And it does look the best I've ever seen this. In this release, Kino Lorber did make it one of those limited edition slipcover releases. 
This slipcover will sell out and then it will come with just your standard case underneath. Secret of the Incas is one of those films, like I said, if you enjoyed Indiana Jones, you need to do yourself justice. Buy this film on Blu-ray from Kino Lorber to check it out. That's all I need to say is, is if you like Indiana Jones, you're gonna love this film. And this is the best way to experience this film that's been released yet on this Blu-ray release from Kino Lorber. Another personal romantic comedy rom-com from 1985 is Secret Admirer. I've always enjoyed this film, though keep in mind it is rated R, it does have language and sexual content, but I always thought it was really funny. And I remember watching this on TV many, many times. And it is one of those films that has a ton of cast and actors from the 80s in it that you'll recognize. And it's a very enjoyable romantic comedy about basically a romantic note that's given to the wrong person that sets off a chain of events of passing different notes around, people thinking it's for them when it's not, and then it's somebody else, and thinking that this person's in love with them when it's not, and it's all the hilarious chain of events of what happens, and it's done in a charming way, and I really think the ending is really well done, and it's just a fun romantic comedy. If you like romantic comedies, this is one from the 80s you're gonna wanna check out. And this release from Kino Lorber looks really good. I really couldn't say there was much wrong with it. It has nice film grain throughout it. The image presentation on it was very stable. And I really enjoyed this film and was glad it was released on Blu-ray. Touching on some releases from Mill Creek. Now I absolutely love these slipcover editions where they're like VHSs to kind of look like what you got back when you went to the rental stores. But you've got The Fan, which is a really enjoyable Tony Scott action thriller. And then over here you've got Fear, which has Reese Witherspoon and Mark Wahlberg in it. It's really a psychological horror movie. And then you've got the comedy, family comedy, Problem Child with John Ritter. I really like each of these films. I can't really say that any of them were horrible films altogether. They have different pacing and tones, obviously, because they're completely different films. But I do like that Mill Creek releases these at budget releases on Blu-ray, that if you haven't owned these films before, they're decent transfers on Blu-ray. They're not gonna blow you away for a Blu-ray release because they are budget releases. That's why they don't cost very much, but they are pretty cool. When you set them on your bookcase and you see how they have all matching spines where they look like VHSs, say Fear, The Fan, Problem Child, they're pretty cool collectibles and I have them up on my bookcase behind there, how I line them all up so they all match and look nice together. So if you're a slipcover collector, you'll wanna add these to your collection so you have these ones from Mill Creek as well. Just keep in mind, as I said, don't expect these to be ultimate gorgeous transfers. They are budget releases of enjoyable films that they are fun to own and have in your collection without breaking the bank or them being so expensive that you can't afford to own them. So two more Kino Lorber releases that I just got done diving into and reviewing that I really enjoyed here was Double Crossbones and The Crusades. Now this is by Cecil B. DeMiles, which if you know anything about him, he did tons of those epic like Ten Commandments and movies like that. The Crusades is more or less, I'd say, a lesser known film of him. Obviously, it is about the Crusades. And it is epic in scope, but I will say it's not my favorite of his films. It has a slower, kind of wonkier pace to it, I think. I think there's too many scenes that kind of didn't blend together well in the film. So it's not my favorite film, but if you're a collector of his and you want to have all of Cecil B. DeMille's films, you'll want to get this one on Blu-ray. As far as Double Crossbones goes, it has Donald O'Connor from Singing in the Rain fame, and it's basically a pirate film about mistaken identities, and they go on the run joining a pirate crew, and it's done in a very lighthearted, kind of comedic sense. And I think it's a well done film. I was actually surprised at how much I really enjoyed it because I hadn't seen this film previously. Now, this Blu-ray, it does have issues with the original film elements. There's tears and some blotches and splotches, but it's a good transfer for the time. And considering I've never owned it before, I was very happy that Kino Lorber released this because it's one of those films that once I did watch it, I really like pirate films and a pirate comedy. This was really enjoyable and it really did surprise me how much I enjoyed it. Now, any of these you wanna buy and add to your collection or check out, I posted those direct links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. I did all the work for you, took all of the time, compiled those all together. Those links never cost you even a penny extra when you click on them, but they do help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny bit. So make sure if you wanna buy any of these releases I reviewed, make sure to click on those links I've posted down below. If you enjoy these videos and all the time and hard work I put into these, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club. 
It always costs you less than a couple of bucks each month, but it does help to support the creation of every one of these videos. I'm not sponsored and I'm not paid by anybody. Just because you get to watch this video for free does not mean this video is free for me to make. It takes me weeks of time to test and analyze every single one of these titles and to make these massive compilation review videos. So make sure if you enjoy watching this content to join my collector's VIP club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. As always, make sure to give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you have fun with this video and you liked all of these compilation reviews, start that conversation in the comment section below and let me know what of these you're excited for, what of these you want to add to your collection, what of these you never heard of and that you're excited that I shared in this video. I always love to hear from all of you, so make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below. As always, I truly hope you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, exciting, early, and exclusive coming out very soon.